mind to decide for yourself that is where it began so in Ghana, in Ghana we are seeing that common sense family atheism it has its roots in the French Revolution and it is rooted deeply in Exodus chapter 5 Pharaoh he did that so that is what actually happened so they rejected religion and in the stead they brought in place atheism and so this is the birth of atheism in our modern world is that all that they rejected no the great city is also compared spiritually to sodom the corruption of sodom in breaking the law of god was especially manifested in licentiousness and this sin was also to be a preeminent characteristic of the nation that should fulfill the specifications of this scripture so transgression of the law so when they rejected religion for atheism they also rejected the law of god for what human rights so this so the french revolution gave birth to human rights so you reject religion you embrace atheism you reject the law of god you embrace human rights so that is what actually happened in um, the french revolution so from this what have we seen come out of the world so there was a separation of church and state and then they also gave birth to a new form of government that is the republican system of government which is largely practiced in western europe in america and in major parts of africa including our beloved country ghana republic system of government a republic they brought out that system of rule so in, in summary in 1798 a rejection of religion for atheism or if you like secularism two a rejection of the law of god for human rights and from thence what did we see because licentiousness we have seen materialism love of the world we have seen narcissism which came out a form of rule that rejected the bible it even uh, this man hitler killed the jews so the world has seen narcissism the bible has parental right over child right but now it has turned the other way around we have his seen child rights overriding parental rights we have abortion rights what why the bible clearly frowns at it and then the icing of the cake but before i talk about that also we've seen Karl and the communist manifesto being launched in 1844 that has a total rejection of christianity wherever they practice communism like china present day china they have no regard for christianity and of course in 1844 charles darwin and the origin of species where it says god did not create the world evolved the theory of evolution and then of course we and several other isms that have come out of atheism and the french revolution so that is what we have seen and the icing on the cake as far as atheism a no god system that the king of the south the beast from the bottomless pit pushed into the world is the lgbtq agenda and i want to run you through certain things these things are going on in the world and i want you to run you i want to run you through through the year the calendar year the icing on the cake which is the lgbtq the world now celebrates these days these significant dates in the world do you know that every 31st march is transgender visibility day 26 april it's lesbian visibility day which is recognized and celebrated across the world that is what atheism if you reject god this is what actually happens the whole month of june is pride month you have to be proud of who you are the lgbt community last year biden celebrated them and kamala harris came here in ghana 
and the LGBT colors shown was shown in our Jubilee house in the form of a light. And let's see what happened in the US and in Ghana. Pride Month in June, in 14th of August, it is Gay Uncle Day. The world recognizes and celebrates it. 23rd September every year, it is Bisexual Visibility Day. And then the last of it is 6th November, it is Transgender Parent Day. So the world has implanted these dates and has been exalting the no God atheistic world. Do what thou wilt. So this is what 17, what actually happened in 1798 in summary. Rejection of the deceived religion. Rejection of the Bible and its author. And then what was what was brought into the fray? Atheism. And this is the result that we are seeing in the world today. And these things, the Christian world is watching. And they are angry. And they are upset with it. To the extent that a Christian nation like America is exalting and celebrating these atheistic, licentious, unholy then in a Christian nation and so as we speak Biden and his globalists and the Macrons and all these people are championing this atheistic agenda we have to act as a nation we need to push back against the hundreds of callous and cynical bills and laws introduced in states targeting transgender children terrifying families and criminalizing doctors and nurses. These bills and laws attack the most basic values and freedoms we have as Americans. That's not hyperbole, that's a fact. The right to be yourself, the right to make your own health decisions, the right to raise your own children. We put protections for housing, employment, health care, education. Chief, I was proud to have ended the ban on transgender Americans. No one should have to fear for their safety in this country. No one should be singled out or demonized or made to feel less than anyone else. Too many people in the LGBT community are worried and afraid about their future and their safety. So today, I want to send a message to the entire community, especially to transgender children. You are loved. You are heard. You are understood. And you belong. This king of the South agenda. And so currently we can see that Biden is the hope of the king of the South philosophy. And it is very strange that he has the backing of the papacy. Very, very strange. Because the papacy is spiritually and literally king of the North Babylon. But this current papacy, current pope, is pushing the king of the south agenda why because it is satan led and the king of the north agenda is also satan led but daniel chapter 11 verse 40 has something very interesting to tell us and that is going to be our last text and then we move to the next session daniel chapter 11 verse 40 what does it say it says that i want to read daniel chapter 11 verse 40 to us and we bring our discussion to an end Daniel chapter 11 verse 40, it says, And at the time of the end, shall the king of the south push at him? And the king of the north, which is religion, shall do what? Shall come against him. So we are going to see a return of religion. But who is the king of the north? Who is behind the king of the north? Satan. So if religion is going to return, what form of religion is going to return? It is a deceived religion. Because the king of the south and the king of the north, the French Revolution, the north and the south, were both Satan led. So if today we are seeing the fruit of atheism, and the Bible tells us that prophetically, king of the north, the false religion, false papal religion, is to return, then clearly 
what kind of religion are we going to see? A counterfeit religion that which existed prior to 1798. So it says, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. That is what we are likely to see this year. Now the Bible tells us that there is going to be the return of religion, the king of the north. So that is what Daniel chapter 11 verse 40 tells us that we are going to experience a return of the king of the north once again. And in the past, what was the nature of the king of the north? Was it a true religion or it was a false religion? The spirit of prophecy tells us that it was what? The people found Romanism to be what? A deception. So it was a deceived religion. Many of the nations of Europe, in Great Controversy, page 269, the powers that ruled in church and state had for centuries been controlled by Satan through the medium of the prophecy. So the king of the north was Satan led, clearly spoken of by the Bible. But what does the Bible actually say? We are going to have a return of the king of the north. So, our title tonight or today is what will happen in 2024 and beyond what will happen in 2024 and beyond in revelation chapter 13 verse 3 so this is what it says and i saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed you see so it was wounded in 1798 and that wound will be healed it was wounded. Religion got behind. Atheism became the dominant thing. But the Bible says that the wound will be healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. So that which happened in the dark ages, as we rightly say, will happen in our world today. A deceived religion, which is paper-led, which is Satan-led, will rule the world once again. In Daniel chapter 11 verse 40, we read it in our previous episode. And we are repeating once again. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. But look at what it further says. And the king of the north shall come against him. <laughs> False religion will return. But who will bring out or who will bring a return of this false religion? And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. You see, chariots. We use chariots for war. Horsemen for war. Ships for business. So the return of the king of the north, he will control the entire military. He will control the economy. The economy will be at his heel. And he will come like a whirlwind. So you can imagine a complete takeover and that is what we are seeing it is going to be a complete takeover but who will restore the king of the north the deceived religion of the dark ages who will restore it and that is what the bible describes it as the image to the beast it is the restoration of the papal religion and where will it be restored? In America. That is what prophecy says. It will start in America. America will lead to the restoration of the people, religion. They will bring religion back. So let's see what Revelation chapter 13 tells us. Look at what Revelation chapter 13, the beast that arose out, arose out of the sea is Protestant America. And America, they are the daughters, Protestants, they are the daughters of the church, the people church. Now, look at what Revelation chapter 13 says, verse 12. 
Let's start from verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast, the king of the north, before him. And causes the earth and them which dwell there to do what? To worship religion. Religion. To worship the first beast, king of the north. Whose deadly wound was what? Healed. So he was wounded. When was that? 1798. Through the French Revolution. That brought an end to the papal system. But the Bible says, the beast that arose out of the sea, that is protestant America, he will cause the earth and them which dwell therein to worship. He will bring back religion. Worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Verse 14. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the first. I've done that discussion, that presentation, and it is gaining ground. We'll talk about that in a future discussion, the Asbury revival and the mega revival that we are about to see very soon. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an what? Image. Image is what? A likeness. A likeness of the original. So the original king of the north, a system, the beast that arose out of the sea, was set up a likeness of the original. What is that supposed to mean? He will bring back religion, and religion will rule. The world will go by religious principles. And it will start from here. In America, and he says that they should make an image to the beast. Look at what the Bible says. Which had the wound by the sword. The Bible is so clear. The, imi- the beast is the king of the north. Papacy. So the paper, the America is the daughter of Rome. And did live. And he had power to give life unto the image to the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak. And cause that as many as would not worship the image to the beast to be what killed? The death occurred during the dark ages. Yes. <laughs> and, and it will repeat. That is Bible prophecy. It will repeat itself once again. That is exactly what the Bible actually says. So, we are seeing the king of the south agenda being pushed by Biden, Biden Joe Biden and his courts. As I pointed out, uh, what is actually happened, happening. Now look at what happened. Just last month, in March, during the Easter celebration. Now I want us to see who is actually pushing the king of the north agenda. It is America. But which side of the divide? You see, in 1798, we had the beast, king of the north. And then a beast out of the bottomless pit, king of the south. And here we are saying that the image to the beast will be formed in America. But as we speak, one side of America is pushing king of the south agenda. And king of the south agenda was led by who? Satan. Interestingly, one part of the political divide is also pushing the king of the north agenda. Beautiful. Beautiful seemingly opposed factions but who is behind them the same spirit which was behind them in 1798 king of the north king of the south so currently in america who is pushing the king of the south agenda the secular atheistic agenda lgbt abortion gay lesbianism Humanism. Who is Biden? The Democrats. Because the Bible says Protestant America will form the image to the beast. But one side is pushing the king of the South agenda. And it is angering the other side. Just as the king of the North back in the dark ages angered the people and the king of the South arose. The same mindset. The same style. You don't change your winning team. So in a single nation, it has been divided into two. 
One side is pushing King of the South agenda. The other side is pushing the King of the North agenda. At the same time, both are being led by who? The same power. Satan. As I, in my previous discussion, I gave these examples. Now let's see what happened in 31st March. Biden declares 31st March, which was Easter Sunday, coincidentally, as what? Transgender Visibility Day. So, look at what this news item tells us. Trump vows to create Christian Visibility Day following Biden's declaration of what? Trans Visibility Day, a protestant nation. Their president declares Easter Sunday, a da Yesu, a wa sorry, as Transgender Visibility Day and calls Americans to disregard the Easter and recognize the transgender people. Can you believe that? And what the hell was Biden thinking when he declared Easter Sunday to be Trans Visibility Day. Such total disrespect to Christians, and November 5th is going to be uh, called something else. You know it's going to be called? Christian Visibility Day, when Christians turn out in numbers that nobody has ever seen before. Let's call it Christian Visibility Day, all right? And what the hell was Biden thinking when he declared Easter Sunday to be Trans Visibility Day? Such total disrespect to Christians, and November 5th is going to be uh, called something else. You know it's going to be called? Christian Visibility Day, when Christians turn out in numbers that nobody has ever seen before. Let's call it Christian Visibility Day, all right? What agenda is that? King of the South, atheistic, licentious agenda. So look at what happened. Biden's declaration of Transgender Day of Visibility, which happened to land on Easter Sunday this year. And look at what Trump said. And what the heck was Biden trying thinking when he declared Easter Sunday to be Trans Visibility Day? Trump asked his supporters during a campaign rally at Green Bay, Wisconsin on Tuesday. Such what? Total disrespect to Christians. So what is the warfare? See the warfare. 1798. Religion, atheism, licentiousness. What is the warfare? Christianity versus what? Atheism, secularism, licentiousness. What happened in 1798 is happening right now in 2024 and it is gaining momentum. It is gaining momentum. It's as though they are going to clash King of the North and King of the South. So right now who is pushing the King of the North agenda, the religious agenda? It is Donald Trump. And prophecy says the King of the North shall push against the King of the South. In other words, religion will be back. And Revelation 13 tells us he will cause the earth and all that dwelling to worship the beast. Religion will be back. So right now, between Biden and uh, Trump, who is pushing the king of the North agenda? It is Trump. Uh, very interesting. And the moment religion returns, the end has come. And that is why we keep pointing out that we are on the verge of a stupendous crisis. The world is going to an end. Hmm. The, he says, such total disrespect to Christians. The presumptive Republican nominee for president promised that November 5 will be declared will be what? Christian Visibility Day if he is elected. You see that? So Trump, Biden declares 31st March as Transgender Visibility Day. And then Trump also declares November 5 as a revenge. Christian Visibility Day. You see the difference? You see the warfare? You see the conflict that it is that is ensuing? Yes. It has to happen. Both are being led by who? Don't forget. Satan. And on November 5th, it is going to be called something else. You know? It's going to be called Christian Visibility Day. Sorry. Trump said to tender us um, applause. So, Biden has faced backlash after his annual day to honor the transgender movement fell on Easter Sunday, one of the most important and holiest days for Christians as they celebrate the resurrection 
of Jesus Christ. Trump's National Press Secretary, Carolyn Leavitt, previously called the Trans Day of Visibility appalling and insulting. Leavitt said, the president's announcement is an example of the Biden administration's years-long assault on what? The Christian faith. <laughs> and that is why Trump made this pronouncement when he met the national religious broadcasters. I showed that in my previous video, but I just want to re echo it once again. So you see, we are seeing, we are going to see a pendulum swing. And that is what Nigel Farage, who is a long serving member of parliament at the European Union, a British, has this to say. We are going to see a pendulum swing. So, as in 1798, the pendulum swung from the king of the north to king of the south. In 2024, all that they are saying is that they are, we are going to see a pendulum swing from atheism, licentiousness, secularism to religion. That is what Nigel Farage has this to say. I am hopeful, I'm optimistic, we can get that pendulum to swing back. Because still, in all of our countries, there is a majority for common sense. We might not see that common sense if we watch CNN or read the New York Times or listen to many on Capitol Hill, but it's the same in every country. You get outside the capital cities and you find a clear, solid majority for common sense. But <clears throat> that shift will not happen on its own. It will only happen if we, in the populist movement, make it happen by getting people to vote for our candidates in numbers that we've never seen before. And we can do this and we will do this, and however downhearted you get, never ever forget that in the end, right through the history of mankind, and it may take time, but in the end, good always triumphs over evil. <laughs> Hold that thought. Now for me, for me CPAC has become an annual pilgrimage. And so the pendulum, the Bible says it will begin in America and it will spread like fire throughout the entire Christian world and the world at large and so not long ago we saw the pendulum swung in Argentina from the south to the north king of the south king of the north from radicals to conservatives far left to far right pendulum swing it just swung also no longer ago in Italy. The new president, the prime minister, she has a far-right, conservative, religious agenda. Not only that, the Hungarian president has hinted that they are waiting for Trump. Trump will lead the agenda. We are idén arra vállalkozunk, hogy elkergessük őket onnan. Jöjjön el végre a szuverenisták kora, térjünk vissza arra a békés és biztonságos pályára, ami nagyjá tette a nyugatot. Make America great again, make Europe great again. Hajrá Donald Trump, hajrá európai szuverenisták, nyergeljünk, vértezzük fel magunkat, irány a csatamező, és kezdődjék a választási harc. Barátaim, emlékezetes hetek várnak ránk fel győzelemre. And right now, the target is not the European Union. And all the posters are saying that the pendulum will swing in next month European Union election. It will swing from the far left, which is radical, which is secularist, which is globalist, which is atheistic, to the far right, which is conservative and religious in flavor. This is exactly what prophecy has foretold. And this is what we are beginning to see being fulfilled. So, between Biden and Trump, logically, if prophecy has anything to go by, then the pendulum would have to swing to the king of the north. And religion 
will control civil power once again. So my last quote, Great Controversy, page 443, paragraph 2. In order for the United States to form an image of the beast, what must happen? The religious power must so control the civil government that the authority of the state will also be employed by the church to accomplish her own ends. We see that being so greatly fulfilled when Trump assumes the role or the reign of power after November 5 elections. And if so, if it so happens, then we are nearing home because the image to the beast will be formed. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen.